Today I'm going to show you how to desolder your joystick module out of your PlayStation 5 controller and install a fresh Hall Effect joystick without any fancy tools like the heat gun. If you haven't so already, do check out my other video on the Drifix kit installation. That's a faster fix for your stick drift. But if you have completely damaged your joystick module, this video is for you. So I've taken off the battery tray as well as the battery. Now I'm going to take these three blue cables off. Depending on the version of your controller, you might have orange cables or yellow cables, but this is a fairly older model, BDM030. Once I take off the three cables, I'm going to use my two fingers from underneath to push these up. We have the four motor wires, and that's where I'm going to use my soldering iron to desolder them. So it's as easy as placing the hot iron on top and just pulling the wire away from the motherboard. This one's already off. Find a tweezer to be quite useful in these steps. I'm now gonna take this entire motherboard away from this controller and leave that to the side. So here we have our motherboard, all the fun begins right here. I'm gonna take off these thumbsticks, first of all. And here we can see the two thumbsticks and you can already see I've already installed the Hall effect in one of the modules, which is this one for the sake of practice for this video. So what we're gonna do now is take off this entire module. So if you notice a difference, we have a little orange interesting cable right here which is not here so what this orange cable is it's an fpc board it's the drifix kit by extreme rate which is an anti-stick drift kit essentially this blue this yellow cable that i installed in my other video so if you're facing a stick drift i suggest you check out that video because installing this is a much easier thing to do you just put your soldering iron and you just solder the board on top of the motherboard and you're set but in this case, just for the sake of the video, I will be taking off this entire module. And for that, I'll have to desolder this Drifix kit. So I will take my soldering iron and what I'll do is desolder these. And I find to have a soldering pump to, quite, to be quite useful. So I'm gonna use my soldering pump to suck off the solder, oops but it did the trick, you can see it has desoldered a lot of the solder. I will place my iron back there again and using my tweezer to pull off the Drifix kit. So this Drifix kit board has been taken off and now this is exactly the motherboard that you would see in your case. I actually don't have a soldering clamp so I just used a rubber band on a pair of pliers and that's sort of acting as like my soldering clamp. So now what we're gonna do is to take off this entire module off the motherboard and I'm gonna be replacing it with some fresh Hall Effect joysticks that you can get from Thompson. I'll leave a link in the description box. There are plenty of other third-party options. So I don't have a heat gun. The heat gun would typically take 30 seconds to a minute or two to melt all this solder and you could take off this joystick in one snap. But since I don't have that material, what I'm gonna do is to desolder each joint individually and you're going to see in a minute how i'm going to do that all you need is literally your soldering iron that you already have and we're also going to be using this desoldering pump bit of copper wick this is going to be helpful for taking the solder away from the motherboard of course some flux as well as your regular solder so my little soldering clamp is holding onto my circuit board and the first thing I'm going to do is to apply some solder on each of these 14 pins. So that's what we're going to do. So take my solder, place my gun on top of the pins and first apply some solder. So yes, applying solder before desoldering is an efficient step to do. So you want to avoid this pin, that pin, this pin, and this pin, because these four are for the motor wires. 
and I've applied solder for each of the other 14 pins of this joystick module. What we're gonna do now is to desolder all of these individual joints. So take your soldering pump, desoldering pump, and what we're gonna do now is to place our soldering iron yet again and to take off this solder. And you can see it does remove a lot of the solder from the joints. So we're just gonna do that for each of the steps. So as you can see, this desoldering pump does take off most of the solder. And this is gonna be super helpful when we try to take off the entire joystick module. So now if you try to compare these solder joints with this side of the board, you can see that we've taken out most of the solder joints. Now if you try to take off this joystick module, you probably won't be able to do it because we've only desoldered the surface of the, the motherboard. So now what we're going to do is to take off further solder. And the way we're going to do this is to first take some flux. Um, I just have some regular flux from Amazon. Um, what we're going to do now is to apply some of this flux as it's going to help us to uh, use the copper wick later on. So now I'm going to take my copper wick and place it on top of the pins with my soldering iron and that's going to help absorb a lot of the solder. And by the way guys, I will leave the links for these uh, materials in the description box so do check it out. The main purpose of this video is to show you how I would be desoldering this entire module without fancy materials like a heat gun. You have to be super cautious, this copper wig does get hot, so just wear gloves or something, or just be careful. So after applying the desoldering copper wick to remove further solder from these joints, can we now take off this entire joystick module? If I try to, it almost feels like there has been absolutely no work done. But we have actually made a lot of progress to remove a lot of the solder. But we're, what we're not gonna do is to actually take these pins off one piece at a time. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna take my push pin to first open up these green gates, which are known as the potentiometers. So just putting my push pin inside and putting these open, taking off these white discs. In my earlier methods, you would be cleaning these white discs and inserting them back again, and that would temporarily fix your stick drift because a lot of the problems are actually accumulated inside these gates. But now what we're gonna do is to try and pull on these potentiometers, and can we do that that these three pieces would be taking off. It looks like it looks like it did come off, but in the case that if it wouldn't come off, let's see, does this come off easily? This piece actually does not come off easily. In these cases, what we can do is to put our soldering iron back in these joints and kind of pressing against the board. Be very careful you don't burn the circuit board. And what you can also do is to break this potentiometer instantly as well. So I'm gonna kind of break it as well so that I can take off the pins one at a time. Just like that. The pins are still there. Now we're gonna desolder them on. And if your soldering iron has a tip, you should be also able to kind of push through those holes. We've actually removed six of the 14 pins. Now, if I tried to take this entire joystick module, it still wouldn't come off because there's still around eight pins that are tightly snug, but we're gonna apply the same principle and kind of break open this entire joystick and remove one pin at a time. So it's a little sad to see how I'm gonna break up my PS5 joystick module, but we're gonna insert a fresh one. Do wear glasses because things do shoot in the midair. Happened to me previously. So 
So we have completely broken apart this entire thing. There you go. And it actually looks like a lot of these holes have been freed up. But in the case where these joints would still not be freed up, what you could do is apply some more solder, use the desoldering pump, and take off the extra solder. But just like that, we have actually removed this entire joystick module by completely shattering it apart. And now we're ready to place a fresh one. If you do have residual solder inside these holes, just for the sake of this example, I will apply a little bit, let's just say right here. And what this will do is not allow you to place the entire joystick module in one go. In that case, what you could do is take your push pin once again and punch through those solder through the hole so it kind of comes out from the other side. If it does not, what you could do is use your soldering iron and placing it on, apply some more solder, use the desoldering pump, So there you go, we have opened up the entire space. Now we can take our fresh Hall Effect joystick module, align it the way it is with the other side and just place the pins in the respective locations and it should go in in one go. If it does not, you may need to like bend these pins a little straighter. And if you do those correctly, you should be able to put everything back again. Just like that. Make sure it's flush against the board. So the way we're gonna resolder this new joystick onto the board is to actually start from the first corner and then work on the other opposite corner. So I will apply some solder onto this big pin And while the solder is there, from the other side, I'm gonna push against the board. So the joystick is actually nice and flush with the board. Repeat on the opposite corner. Before I actually go ahead and re-solder these joints, one thing I absolutely forgot to mention, you should be cleaning your circuit board after you actually desolder it. So I have some rubbing alcohol and what I'll do is just put a spray on it and this will dry pretty quickly but you can use a cotton bud and just clean off any debris. In my case it really didn't get too dirty so I didn't really have to do it but you should be cleaning your board if it's dirty. Absolutely important that you need that alcohol to dry up really well before you proceed and make sure there's no leftover debris from those cotton bud into the uh, into the circuit board. So I'm gonna clamp this board yet again. And also a side note, you wanna keep your soldering iron clean at all times. So when you notice the, uh, the surface oxidizing, you can always use a copper, I really don't know what you call this, but this just essentially cleans up the entire soldering iron and it's absolutely heating the transfer, transferring the heat a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-solder these joints for the new Hall Effect sticks. If you're wondering what my soldering iron is set to, it's actually set to 375 degrees Celsius. So plenty of heat, but if you notice that your soldering iron is taking way too much heat to melt the solder, your iron probably needs a tip change or again, you just gotta clean it. Just like that, we have attached a new fresh piece of Hall Effect joystick onto our PlayStation 5 controller. But hold on a second, we really haven't quite finished the work yet. What we now have to do is to connect this controller to the PC, calibrate, and make sure these joysticks are actually nicely centered and the range is also balanced. Press hard against. Now 
Now I'm going to connect the three blue wires and might as well resolder the motor wires. So just as a caution, the red wire will go beneath. So after you've resoldered the motor wires, what we're now gonna do is attach our battery. So first I have this battery tray. I'm gonna take a screw and also screw the battery tray in place as well. Take the battery, connect the battery to that white pocket. And now take your USB-C cable, connect it to your controller and connect that to your computer. So I want you to go to hardwaretester.com slash gamepad and then connect your controller to this software. And we can clearly see that the stick that we have changed, we have a minor stick drift, not only on the one that we have changed, but also on the other one. So both of them have a slight stick drift, but we have successfully soldered the module. We can even test the circularity. So I can just slowly move them and we can see that it has a significant error rate, about 20%, more than that. So having seen that, I want you to go to dualshock slash tools.github.io and in this software, we're actually gonna calibrate our controller. So on this side, we have the calibrate stick center. So we're gonna click that and hit start. So we're gonna follow the instructions. So it says to move both the sticks to the top left corner and release them. So I'm gonna move these to the top left corner and I'm gonna release them and I'm gonna hit continue. Now it says to move the, both the sticks to the top right corner. So I'm gonna do that, release, and then continue. Now it says bottom left, release, continue, and as you may have guessed, bottom right. So these are just some steps to calibrate and notice what we see. Both these sticks have been centered really well. And now if I go back to hardwaretester.com, we can see that both the sticks have been nicely centered, but the range seems a little off. We can see it re really shoots outside the circle. So I'm gonna go back to DualShock calibration website, and now I'm gonna hit the calibrate stick range. And all you have to do now is to just rotate the sticks clockwise or anti-clockwise very slowly, release them and hit done. And now going back to hardwaretester.com, we can see both these sticks are nicely centered and their range is also looking great. So we have successfully replaced the Hall Effect joystick onto our motherboard and we've also fixed the stick drift.